we're going to talk about positive and negative real numbers. In our last few videos, we talked about uh, we talked about counting numbers, which were natural numbers. Now we're going to talk about whole numbers. We're going to expand that to include whole numbers. Whole numbers are numbers that start at zero that do not contain any fractions or decimals. So starting at zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. So it looks very much like the natural numbers, but natural numbers are counting numbers. So when we're little, we learn to start counting at the number one. Whole numbers are all of the natural numbers, including zero. So we're gonna include zero now. Integers expands that even further. Integers, are whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and their opposites. So now we go to the left. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. The opposite of 2 is negative 2. The opposite of 3 is negative 3. I'm going to move this so that I can continue this to the left. The opposite of 4 is negative 4. The opposite of five is negative five, and so on and so forth to the left. So integers include all of the whole numbers and their opposites. And it's in that list of integers that we start talking about the opposite of those positive numbers. Our positive numbers are to the right of zero. So we have positive integers right here. One, two, three, four, those are our positive Just the ones that I marked with a circle, the dots, those are positive integers. Our negative integers are the opposites. We call those negative. So negative integers. The opposite of a positive number is a negative number. And then of course we have zero. And it's important to note here that zero is neither positive nor negative. Neither positive nor negative. So it does not have a sign. Rational numbers, rational numbers are any number that can be written as a division of two integers. So we call that fraction notation. So a number divided by a number, four divided by seven. So an integer divided by an integer, but now our integers include positives and negatives. So we could have negative two divided by five. Now when we have a negative fraction, we can write that negative fraction with the negative in the, in the numerator. We can write that negative in the middle, or we could write that negative in the denominator. Typically, when we're writing with our handwriting, we're going to put the negative in the numerator. When we're typing, as you would see in a textbook, typically you'll see that negative in the middle. Very rarely will we keep that negative in the denominator in a final answer. But all three of those are equivalent, and that's why I have equal signs separating negative two-fifths, negative two-fifths, and two divided by negative five, or two over negative five. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as fractions. So irrational numbers are decimals that neither terminate nor repeat. Now, the reason it says decimals that neither terminate nor repeat is because these fractions, these fractions are division problems. These are division problems. And when we divide, we are going to end up with decimals as our answers in some cases. When those decimals repeat their values, they have a pattern, they are rational numbers. When those decimals neither terminate nor repeat, that's when you have an irrational number. And that typically happens when you have something like the square root of two that is not perfect. Maybe the square root of five that would be an irrational number. 
An irrational number is the Greek letter pi, which is approximately, because this continues forever without repeating, 3.14, and then it continues to go without repeating. That's why sometimes when you see on movies, when someone says, oh, I said pi out to a thousand places, they're memorizing 1,000 values without any kind of a pattern whatsoever, which makes it pretty, uh, pretty big feat to know all the places, all those places that pi goes out and how far one can remember those numbers. The absolute value of a number, the absolute value of a number is its distance from zero. So the absolute value of number measures the distance from zero. So I'm going to look here at my number line and let's look at the number three. The number three is three units from zero. So the absolute value of three would be three because it's three units from zero. If I were going to look at the absolute value of negative three, the absolute value of negative three is also three because it's three units from zero. So it's important to note here, distance is always positive. So you will never ever have the absolute value of a number equaling a negative. So the absolute value of a number will always equal a positive value. Always equal a positive value. Now in the next video, we're gonna actually do some examples working with all of these definitions.